What's up guys, it's James from CopLogic, welcome back to the channel. The games never stop in modern day football, so we're back with another match preview. It is Liverpool versus Leicester in the Carabao Cup. Third round at Anfield, 7.45pm kickoff. So we all know about Liverpool's form, we are in great form at the moment, no matter what team we put out, no matter what competition we're in, we're in absolutely brilliant form, unbeaten in 17 games. Leicester, however, have not had a bad start to life in the championship themselves, they are of course in the championship, so it's not going to be quite the same as the usual Leicester Premier League side that we would play but Leicester themselves not had a terrible start to the championship they currently sit top of the table and they've played eight games already things move fast in the championship they played eight games and they've won seven of those and only lost one so it's a good start to life in the championship for Leicester but of course it is the championship we have to remember that so it's not exactly the same Leicester that we're used to facing they've lost some key players they're playing a level down. How much we can read into this, I don't know. The one thing I would say, and the one thing you've got to be very wary of, is Leicester will want this game. They'll go all out for it. It's a cup competition for them. They're used to playing Premier League opposition. They probably feel a little bit aggrieved that they went down last season. And the fans certainly will want to see a message get sent here. They're coming to Anfield. They've got really nothing to lose. It's a bit of a free hit for them, similar to like it was for Lask. So I do think Leicester are going to put everything into this game. They're going to really go for it. We do have to be careful just because of that they're going to be right up for this and they'll probably the likelihood is going to play their strongest team especially when they're sitting top of the championship table in terms of the last head-to-heads it's worth looking at but don't take too much from it because again it is going to be a different Leicester side a couple of key players left over the summer so in the last five competitive games Liverpool have won four and only lost one which is absolutely great odds for Liverpool it's quite typical when we do these previews that you see Liverpool being dominant throughout history and that doesn't even include the pre-season friendly which was the last time we faced Leicester in the current outfit that makes them up and we beat them there very comfortably with a 4-0 win and that even included a rotated team and a goal from Ben Doak which I think is going to be important when we get onto our team selection. Fixtures coming thick and fast for Liverpool so there's going to have to be some changes here I think it's going to be very similar to the team Jurgen Klopp put out against Lask. So starting with the goalkeeper I've gone with Cueven Kelleher now it's typical for him to start in the Carabao Cup games anyway regardless of how many fixtures are mounting up. As Jürgen Klopp normally says, this is Kelleher's competition. I can see him playing a bunch of times in the early stages of the Europa League, but by the time we get to the latter end of that, Allison will definitely come in. This competition, however, if we were to make it to the final, I would absolutely back Kelleher to be in that starting lineup. So he's definitely starting today. This is his competition. It's definitely deserved for Kelleher. I love Kelleher. I absolutely back him as a goalkeeper, so I've got zero issues with this. And he stayed loyal to the club. He stayed over the summer, so he deserves game time. For the fullbacks, I've gone with Stefan Bashetic at right back and Kostas Simikas at left back. Now Bashetic, it's a little bit of game time for him. The reason I put him at right back is because I'm making a couple of changes to the centre back position, so I'm going to need Bashetic at right back because Trent Alexander Arnold won't feature in this game. He's only just returned to training. I'm hopeful that we see him by the weekend, but let's see on that one. So Stefan Bashetic, it's a bit of game time for him. He played, he played at right back against Lask, so he knows what he's doing, kind of. It, it's an odd one for him, but look, he's a defensive player. He can definitely manage it. Stefan Bichette is to start over at left back I'm going Costa Simicast he's just signed a new contract I was very unimpressed with this performance at last so I'm expecting big things from Costas in this game I want to see I want to see some ambition I want to see some passion he's just signed a new contract so I'm hoping he's going to be up for it I'm hoping he's got a little bit of a point to prove after his performance at last Costa Simicast you're getting a second chance mate you're in the team in terms of the two center backs I've gone with Ibrahim Akanate and Joe Gomez now the reason I picked Ibu is because he didn't start against West Ham and we know he's fit so it's a game for him to get a little bit of time in his legs he probably won't finish it I don't think I think we'll sub him off and then we'll probably use him on the weekend because at some point he needs to get back into the regular Premier League rotation and this is a player that I, I said last time we can't really afford to play him midweek and on the weekend because of his injury record so I think he probably starts this game but doesn't finish it and then he starts on the weekend against Tottenham Joe Gomez I've gone with just because Virgil van Dijk's played the last couple of games in a row now including midweek fixtures he's going to need a rest at some point this is Leicester it's a championship competition so we've got to think about it that way i think he played brilliantly against west ham he's been really underrated this season a lot of people judging him based on past performances perhaps yeah he makes a couple of mistakes in there but he's having a great season so far joe gomez i think he's proven a lot of doubters wrong i think he is a better right back than he is center back so this is going to be a big test for him but i've put him in ahead of joel matic because i think his performances have earned him a start in this game and hopefully trent alexander arnold is back by the weekend for tottenham so he won't be needed as a right back which means he'll finally get that rest that he needs as well because he's also an injury prone player but right now he's fit he's in good form 
I'm giving him a start at center back. Moving on to CDM, I'm going with Taru Endo. And the reason I picked Endo is because, again, he started in this position against last. I think it's a good decision. It's championship competition. It's a cup competition. It's time to bring the fringe players in and use them in these kind of games. And I think, well, Jürgen Klopp mentioned actually on the weekend, he's aware of the limited game time that Endo is getting. We know this guy is capable of a performance, but he's experienced. He knows what he's doing. He's a national side captain. Again, he's a key player in this kind of team when you are swapping players out. You maybe got some younger players in, some fringe players, things like that. I think a figure like this, a captain, a national captain, is key to a team with a lot of changes in it. Someone to really hold down the fort, so to speak. He's the James Milner. You know, he really is a James Milner. I don't mean that in terms of a skill level. I mean that in terms of the role that he is now playing at Liverpool Football Club. So I'm happy for Endo to start. He'll have a point to prove to Jurgen Klopp. He probably wants more game time than he's getting. So it's a big game for him as well. If he performs well, you never know what might happen going forwards. Wataru Endo as CDM for me. And then we'll move on to the two centre mids, do them together. Going Harvey Elliott and Ryan Gravenberg. Again, it's the same midfield that started against Lask. I think that is probably what we're going to see, even being honest with you. Harvey Elliott, he's had some really good performances this season off the bench but I was disappointed with his performance at last so for him it's a chance to redeem himself Ryan Gravenberg I think he's been in the spells that we've seen him and I think he's looked good for me this is just a chance to give Ryan Gravenberg some time get him used to the team and try and get him back up to speed we've seen against last he came off with cramp towards the end now that's because he wasn't getting minutes at Bayern Munich it's been a long time since he's played a lot of regular football so we need to kind of bed him back into that get his body used to it as well so I think he plays 90 minutes if he can if but you know that's for the fitness squad they will have monitored that they'll know how much he can do and uh, yeah I guess we'll see but important game for him just to get some fitness back in his body and eventually we'll start seeing him start in Premier League games I'm sure left wing and striker position I think we can do these together because they're fairly obvious I've gone Diogo Jota and Cody Gakpo now they did they've not had a start in the last two games they didn't start against West Ham they didn't start against Lask so it has to be the two of them they deserve a start at some point as i said last time you can't keep them out forever and it's time to give darwin and diaz a little bit of a rest you never know they could make an appearance if things aren't going to plan against leicester but cody gakpo and diogo jota are more than enough to handle leicester diogo jota looked amazing when he came on against west ham he looked fired up he looked like he had a point to prove and i think he, he will bring that attitude across into this game because he doesn't want to be out the team he wants to be in that starting 11 and i think he will do his utmost to show jürgen klopp that he deserves to be there in this this game so i think a big game from diogo jota cody gakpo very similar situation to jota and i think probably a good player for this game because leicester will be fired up they'll want it we've got a lot of changes in the squad gakpo the benefit that gakpo gives you is he plays that false nine role so he drops back into midfield he will create an overload in midfield it'll give us more possession which keeps things away from leicester who are just going to be attack they're just going to be knocking at the door as much as they can i think i think they're really going to go for it so cody gakpo probably is a better choice than darwin nunes for this game to be honest with you and that brings us on to our right wing. I think you guys know who I'm going to say here. So pop him in. It is, of course, Ben Doak. He scored against Leicester in the preseason friendly. And I would back him to get a goal in this game, to be honest with you. He looks like a really good player. He didn't have his strongest game against last. But again, it's a chance for redemption. It's familiar opposition for him. He's full of talent. He's got bags of pace. He's exciting to watch. So yeah, I'm excited to see what Ben Doak can do. I think he was probably frustrated with his own performance against last. He probably didn't want to come off. And I don't think he'll want to come off in this game so again like Jota I think he's gonna have a point to prove he won't want to be replaced by Mo Salah we probably don't want to use Mo Salah if we can get away with it because that keeps him fresh for Tottenham big game hopefully a big game from Ben Doak hopefully a huge performance from Ben Doak and if I look at this team I honestly do think it's enough to beat Leicester and it once again emphasizes the depth we've got at Liverpool Football Club right now is really really good the fact that our second string team contains Diogo Jota and Cody Gakpo is very exciting it's exciting times for Liverpool Football Club. I think this is enough to beat Leicester and even if it isn't, just think about the firepower that we're going to have on that bench. Mohamed Salah, Darwin Nunes, Luis Diaz, even in defence, you know, we're going to have Virgil van Dijk there on the bench. We're going to have Dominic Soboslai, Alexis McAllister in the midfield. So like, yeah, I don't think we're going to have too much problem with Leicester. So let's move on to the score prediction. I'm actually going to go with a clean sheet for this one. I know that's kind of crazy considering that we're not keeping clean sheets at the moment. A lot of 3-1s and whatever, but last time we did keep a clean sheet it was with a changed back four i think i feel like it's just classic liverpool to to do it with this back four so i'm gonna take a gamble this time i'm not gonna go with a 3-1 i'm gonna back us to keep a clean sheet and i think i'm gonna go with the 2-0 
fairly conservative, I know, but again, I expect Leicester to come at us, so it's going to be a lot of possession by the time, wait for the opening. Control the ball, control the pace of the game, and then wait for those openings. So I'm going to go with a comfortable, very controlled 2-0 for Liverpool Football Club. Liverpool dominant as per usual in the win percentage, with Liverpool at 70%, Leicester at 13%, so I'm I'm going along with that, but I'm going with a clean sheet for Creven Kelleher, and I'm going Liverpool 2, Leicester 0. Let me know in the comments what you guys think from this game. Give us your score predictions down there in the comments. Let me know if you've got any changes to that team that I've selected. If you are going to Anfield, then I will see you there. And as the sun is creeping in across my face, we'll get out of here. As always, guys, thank you very much for watching. We will see you guys in the next video. Peace.